Good evening, brethren, and welcome to this Wednesday healing service. Join us so that we can pray together and learn the word of God. Let us pray. Our Father, in Jesus' name, we bow before you in humility this evening to thank you and to glorify your name. We honor you. We praise you. This evening, Lord, as we bring our needs and petitions to you, as we come that we may present those who are sick to you, as we hear a word of encouragement that you gave your servant, so that, Lord, we may use the same words to feel encouraged. May you speak to us in a language we understand. May you teach us May you remind us that you are always there for us, despite the situations. Guide us and teach us. May you hear us, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we learn from Genesis, as we come to learn about healing, we think a lot about healing in matters of physical illness and we forget there is also spiritual and psychological illness which we need to bring to the Lord. Many a times the challenges that we face in the world, in our lives, indeed sometimes supersede the physical diseases we may suffer. This evening, I would like us to look at one story in the book of Genesis that helps to give us strength, that helps to give us hope and to encourage us that the Lord is with us even when we seem to be forgotten by other people, when we are despised, when others don't seem to think we are anybody. God still thinks about us and comes to save our situation, to resolve our problems, and to give us comfort. Let us turn together to the book of Genesis, chapter 21, verse 14. We shall read it together. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on, their, on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and set about a bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy cry, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy cry as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened the eye, her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. Praise the Lord. That is the word of the Lord. We see the story of Hagar in Genesis chapter 21. And Hagar is not a new name to us. Hagar was a housemaid in Sarah's house. Remember the story of Abram, Abram who had his wife Sarah, and he was promised by God 
that God would make him a father of nations. Then Sarah, as we, have, we know we have read earlier, Sarah gave her housemaid to Abraham to get a child with. And the name of the housemaid was Hagar. The name of the child was Ishmael. We know the story. And we also know that Sarah later got her own son, Isaac. When Isaac was weaned, Sarah was jealous. And she thought Ishmael might end up coming to share our wealth with Isaac. So I don't want them around. And she sent, she said, send them away. That's what she told the husband Abraham. Now, Hagar was the so called Mpango Wakando of Abraham, and she had a child. Abraham didn't want to send her away, but he was forced by his wife Sarah. Let's think about it. Try to think about the situation of this woman, Hagar. She has lived there. She has born Abram a child. And today, Sarah doesn't care about her anymore because she has her own child. And so she's kicked out. Think about it and try to imagine yourself in such a situation. Verse 11 of chapter 21 reads, The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son but God said to him do not be distressed about the boy and your slave woman listen to whatever Sarah tells you because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned so Abraham was assured by God that send her away reason to Sarah and do that. But try to think about Hagar. She never thought that God cared for her. She never thought that Abraham cared for her because all she could see was hatred. Verse 14 Early the next morning, early the next morning, it means that when Abraham could not sleep, in the wee hours of the night, he came up and called his, the slave woman, Hagar, early in the morning. And what did he do? He took some food, some. We don't know the quantity of that food. He took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off, sent her off with the boy, sent her off into the desert. She didn't know where she was going. Her fate was sealed. She had to leave the home. And he sent her off with only a little food, a skinful of water, and her 13 year old boy. They were sent off. And as they were going, in verse 15, verse 15, when the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. That is after wandering in the desert. One who is wandering in some place means that they do not know the direction of wherever they are going. They do not have a destination where they are going so they continue wandering moving round and round and the water got finished and when the water was finished she put the boy under one of the bushes because that's the only place that was a bit cool and here is the boy you can imagine the boy staggering in the desert because he's thirsty, because the food is finished, because the water is finished. 
And the only thing she can do is put him under the bush. It was a sorry situation. It was a distressing situation. It was a difficult one for Hagar. But she had to do it because she was banished from Abraham's home. And she put the boy under the bush and said, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. Sobbing, crying quietly, shedding tears quietly. The racking noises from the chest, the chesty cry. Think about it. Sobbing. Because the boy will definitely die. But then, just as she was sobbing, God heard the boy cry. So as Hagar was sobbing, the boy was crying. And God from heaven looked down and heard the child. He heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar. Help was on the way for Hagar. Help was on the way from God. And just then, she was opened. Her eyes were opened, and she could see the well of water. Praise the Lord. Yes, we think most of the times we think very negatively about Hagar because she was a slave woman because she had gone to give the child who was actually not the promised child and we think so highly of Sarah which is good but then we ask ourselves how about Ishmael how about us just when we think that we are the lowest of the low ones have you ever felt that the time has come that you might just die? And you see when you have nothing to feed your children, you want to walk away because you don't want to see them cry. Because you don't want to see them as they suffer. How about you? Have you ever sat somewhere inside that dark room and you are sobbing because there's nothing you could do? Because you felt it was over for you? Do we cry to the Lord? Do we cry when we are hurting inside because we feel that we don't belong to anybody and that we feel we are useless people? Many a times when people are feeling distressed, when people are wondering in their problems, when people are suffering in their homes with their sick ones, when cancer has struck, when COVID-19 has struck, when diabetes, when hypertension, and mention all those conditions come, and you go to the doctor and the doctor says, sorry, you've got to use this medication all your life. And you go into that dark room and you're sobbing and you're crying because you think it is over. When you, as a wife, your husband goes astray and you get into that dark room and you're sobbing alone, you don't want to watch the marriage die. And so you go and close yourself in a room and start sobbing. When your child is also suffering under the shed and comes home drunk and you are sobbing in that room, you don't want to lose your children. Whom do you confide in? Whom do you cry to? Some of us will cry to God and leave it all to God and say, God, take over. But some of us will cry to relatives. And the relatives will say, look at him, look at her. They can do anything. After all, they don't help us. Let them be. And some are just. Some people, some women have been widowed. And instead of getting help, 
They are kicked out of the homes and they go wandering in different places, just like Hagar. Some of us will seek solace in the occult. Some of us will go to the witch doctors. Some of us will go to the so-called pastors who are actually not preaching the word of God, but preaching their own word. Some of us will run away to alcohol and drugs. But where do we go? Where do we go from here? When the disease strikes, where do we go? Where do we give our children when we put them under the shed? Whom do we call? And I tell you, brothers and sisters, let us call on the name of the Lord. Because he is the one who can do it for us. Verse 17 is clear. That God heard the boy crying. God hears our cry. God knows us. God knows what is going through our hearts. God knows what is going through our minds. God knows what is going through our lives. And he can hear us. He can hear your cry wherever you are. He can hear what you say. And what does he do? He sends the angel to open our eyes. Verse 19. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. Have you seen the well that the Lord is directing you to? Have I seen the well that the Lord is directing me to? Because sometimes as we sob, as we cry, our eyes are blinded by the tears. Our eyes are blinded by the suffering that is in our hearts. Our eyes are blinded by the thoughts that go through our minds. Only thinking about what we have lost. Thinking about how we cannot reclaim what we have. Try to imagine what was going on in Hagar's mind. Hagar must have thought, the boy will die and then I will follow. But she was more concerned about the boy and she kept him away. Brothers and sisters, do you have a similar situation? Do you have a situation where you are putting your children away so that you don't see them die? Are you in a situation where instead of crying to God, you're spending time crying and sobbing? It is normal. It is human. It is what goes in our hearts. But remember that the Lord Jesus Christ gave us the chance to cast all our burdens unto him. Praise the Lord. Yes, we cast the problems to him. Then we wipe or he wipes our eyes and our tears. Then we are able to see the well that he's showing us. This evening, the promise of God is real. The promise of God as to what he will give us and what he will do for us is real. We have just read what Abraham was told by God. Abraham was told that I'll also make this boy a great nation because he's your child. He's your son. So even for you, you share the promise of God that God hears you, that God hears when you call, God hears when you cry, and He knows your name. He knows you by name. He knew Ishmael by name because Ishmael was the son of Abraham. Even for us, He knows our names, He knows your name. So when you cry, He will say, Yes. That's my daughter. That's my daughter. I'll send my angel to my daughter to rescue her. I will send my angel to that son of mine to rescue him. Praise the Lord. This evening, feel encouraged. Are you at a point of losing hope? Are you at a point that you have lost hope and 
you feel like your children will die? Remember that woman who sold her children in Kenya just recently? Remember the one who threw her children into the river and she followed? Because she gave up. Let us not give up. Let us continue calling on the name of the Lord for he will do it for us. This evening, may it be a different day for all of us. May it be a day that we shall spend time not just giving our problems to the friends that we have, not to the relatives. Let us go to that quiet room and call on the name of the Lord. Whatever you're suffering from, whatever desert you are wandering in, whatever desert is in your heart or your mind and your life and your marriage, the Lord is showing you the well this evening. May it be so for you. May it be in such a way that you will later say that yes, the Lord is with me. Listen to verse, to what he says in verse 20. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his wife got, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. Now, then we see that God's promises were fulfilled. And I want to say to you, I want to say to all of us that God will fulfill the promises he has made. He says, call unto me and I'll show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Even this time, when we are fighting COVID-19, even at this time, when the scientists are working, call upon the name of the Lord for healing upon those who are sick. Even this time when cancer is ravaging the country and we seem to have forgotten because there is COVID-19, let us call on the name of the Lord. He will hear us. He will fulfill what he has promised. If he said he would make Ishmael, who really was not the promised child, if he said he would multiply him, how about us who are children of the promise? You and I are children of the promise. And he will fulfill what he has said. He will fulfill what he has promised. I ask that we bow together. Call on the name of the Lord. And instead of sobbing, speak with the Lord. Call on his name. Mention the challenges we have. Is it water we need? Is it food that we need? Are we in a desperate situation? Then he will do it for us. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we can see that the Lord was with Ishmael who was not the promised child. Isaac was the promised child, yet God was with Hagar because of Abraham's son. We too are the children of God. We too are children of Abraham, the children of promise. But the devil comes to kill and destroy. And the devil comes into our marriages the devil comes into our lives. The devil comes into our businesses. Who else can we turn to? Where would I go but to the Lord? That's where I urge that we go this evening. As we bow, as we kneel, as we call on the name of the Lord, let us believe that he's with us. Let us praise him for what he will do. Let us glorify him for what he will do. And in your life, you will see the well. It is my prayer that the Lord opens your eyes so that you see the well that will water your marriage this evening. That the Lord opens your eyes to see the well that will water your family this evening. That will feed your family this evening. May you see the well that will water your business this evening and you will prosper. 
you will also hearken to the voice of the Lord. You will be and continue be a child of the promise. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. May you see the well. Amen. Oh, 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 oh,